Hi everyone, it's me, Crystalyn, your proactive conscious aging life coach. How are you guys doing today? I'm joyful in the Lord and in the power of his might. Welcome once again to my channel. Today is Saturday, April 6th, and this is my 30 day, one month castor oil use update. I want to thank all of you guys who've been watching these videos all the way from my first castor oil video. This is number five, and I would say that this one is probably going to be my last one for a while anyway, in case I, unless I should say, I come up with some other wonderful uses for the castor oil that I don't know right now, because I pretty much have used this castor oil from head to foot. And so I'm going to give you the results of every place that I've used it today. Uh, before I get started though, as usual, I want to remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like with the thumbs up, share this video, and please don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can get my videos just as soon as I upload them. Please also Put your comments down in the comment section because I love us to have a great conversation uh, and I enjoy everyone's comments and you might know some things that you want to add to the conversation. So please leave a lot of comments. Let's just get started. Well, first of all, I'm going to show you the brand that I use. This is my favorite. And this is the Heritage Store brand castor oil. It's cold pressed, organic, hexane free, and it comes in the dark bottle. And it is also, um, what did I say? Vegan and cruelty free. And you can take it internally too. One of the things that I was really wanting to emphasize in the last couple of videos that I did is that you want to make sure that if you're going to use your castor oil internally, that you make sure that you can do that because some of the castor oils you can't. So anyway, this one you can. Let me start from my head. First of all, I use the castor oil on my hair to condition my hair. And what I did, um, I was getting a relaxer touch up, okay? And so what I did is I actually put this coconut oil and I mixed it with the castor oil. You can see how old that is. <laughs> it's a big container. But anyway, I mixed these two and I put them on the ends of my hair and let my hair condition while I was doing the touch up. And don't you know that that worked so very well? I'm gonna continue to do that. We'll give that one a 10, okay? Uh, well, let's say 10. We'll give that use a 10, the hair conditioning use. Uh, because that just worked great. After I rinsed my hair out and washed it and everything and dried it, my hair was so soft and I really like that. You know, one thing about conditioning your hair, conditioners can get very, very expensive, especially when you start getting into, you know, specialty type conditions conditioner, excuse me. For example, I have relaxed hair. And as I told you a few videos ago, I've been on a hair repair journey. So the actual conditioner that I use with my Affigy products is kind of expensive. I still use it because I'm still on this journey, but I did try these two together and I will recommend the mixture of the coconut oil and the castor oil 100%. All I did, I put it actually on the ends of my hair, but you can also use this to help prevent dandruff. So what you would do is you would just, you know, um, comb through your hair, part it, massage it on your scalp, leave it in for a while. You can even leave it in overnight, actually, if you want to, and that's gonna help reduce and eliminate dandruff if you have that problem. So. I use mine just as a conditioner and it was on my head for about 20 minutes and then I washed it off and it worked beautifully. So like I said, we'll give that use a 10. The next place that I used my castor oil on was up here uh, in the traction alopecia area. And I have traction alopecia up here 
from wearing my hair in a ponytail. And I wear it like that all the time because I like to have it that way when I go to the gym. It's just easy, easy, easy for me to have my hair like that. I don't have to style it. I just pull it back and that's it. But I got traction alopecia from that. And uh, when I was younger, I didn't really notice that the hair was, you know, being lost. I didn't really notice it actually until my daughter brought it to my attention. And she says, well, you know, you're getting traction alopecia. <laughs> so I figured I would try to do something about that. And as I told you before, now traction alopecia can also cause scarring in the areas where the traction is. And if you have scarring in those areas, no amount of oil is going to um, help that hair grow back. So if that is the case, if you've been using your castor oil in this area and you don't notice any hair growth or hair thickening after I want to say six months, you might want to visit your dermatologist because I did see a video from some dermatologists who addressed that problem of the scar tissue that can form in those areas. And they said that they had injections that they can give you to help reduce the scarring and help the hair grow back. I'm not going to be doing that. Just being honest with you guys. I'm going to keep using my castor oil. And actually what I have been using, I have been using this one. It's the Diphil Caffeine and Castor Oil Mixture. And I got this one off of Amazon. So I've been using this and actually I added some of my Heritage Store brand castor oil to this because I'm not quite sure the percentage of castor oil that's in here, but I wanted to make sure I got a higher percentage. So I did use this and I have been using it in the areas of my traction alopecia and I will have to give that one about a five. I haven't noticed that much uh, new hair growth yet, but I'll tell you one thing, it's hard when you have like gray hair coming in <laughs> for you to see any hair growth because the hair is like almost invisible, okay? And you guys out there with gray hair know what I'm talking about. So I haven't noticed that much you know, new growth of hair, but I am going to continue to use it and we'll see what happens over the next few months as far as that goes. I give it a five for now. <laughs> I haven't seen too much, but who knows, okay? So I have some little notes here that uh, I wanted to tell you about how castor oil affects hair growth. First of all, it's an emollient and it helps prevent water evaporation from the skin and from the hair and in that way it relieves um, you know that dryness and it supports the structure and it soothes skin inflammation and it also smooths excuse me it soothes inflammation that you may have around your hair follicles and you know when the inflammation goes down the health goes up and that's for like anything in your body we always want to bring the inflammation down now what else it helps to hydrate everything well hydrate emollient that's about the same thing but anyway in other words it improves the environment for hair growth and thus helps the hair growth be seen and you know how it is um, a lot of times the hair is growing in stages we have different stages of hair growth it's not all gonna stay on your head at the same time we got four stages we have the antigen phase which is the growth phase we have the canogen phase which is when it stops growing we also have the telogen phase is when it's resting and that's kind of like most of the time and then we have the exogen phase which is the evacuation phase and that's when the old hair is pushed out of the follicle and a new hair comes up now you may notice for example let me move down to my lashes and my eyebrows you may notice that certain times of the year your eyebrows and your eyelashes seem to be shedding and you know like they might be coming out right in the middle of the eyebrow or right in the middle of the lash line and you know when you're doing your eyebrows you know you are not tweezing in the middle of your eyebrows right but you can you notice that they are coming out in those areas and that is because of that exogen phase when the hair actually evacuates 
from the hair follicle. So just know this, your hair, your head hair, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, your body hair is always growing in phases. So, you know, try to give yourself a break when you see yourself losing some hair because part of that is natural. Now, I'm gonna tell you some other things that kind of affect your hair growth all over your body. First of all, stress affects your hair growth. Second of all, age, our hair becomes thinner and it slows down growing and it might stop altogether. I'm gonna give you some funny examples. When I was younger, I used to have hair, you know, all over my arms. As I got older, the hair has actually disappeared. Okay, it was here. It wasn't like real heavy or anything, but there was hair there. It's gone now that I'm 63. The same thing happened on my thighs. I used to have little fine downy hairs on my thighs. I'm not sure when it disappeared, but it's gone. So I can attest to that as far as um, hair stopping growing hair stopping to grow, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, in certain areas due to age. And that has to do with hormones and just we're getting older. Things don't work the same way that they used to. So that's one thing that can cause, you know, uh, hair shedding, eyebrow hair loss, eyelash hair loss, stress, age. The stage of growth can cause little spots and shedding. Also, diseases. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because our body shows us deficiencies and disease in many different ways. For example, metabolic diseases such as diabetes, hypothyroidism, thyroid insufficiency, or thyroiditis can affect hair growth. In the case of the hyperthyroidism, the hair growth is accelerated. And then the hair falls out more quickly due to the production of thyroid hormones. Now, with the thyroid insufficiency, it's kind of the opposite. The hair growth is impaired due to the, the deficiency of those, those hormones. Excuse me, I'm getting a little tongue-tied. It's impaired because of that. And also, autoimmune skin diseases, for example, like dermatitis or psoriasis, uh, eczema, those things can also be reasons for hair loss. So when you see yourself having kind of an unusual hair loss over a period of time, that ought to be like a red flag for you to go visit your doctor and have some uh, blood drawn and get some tests and see the levels of these various things in your blood because our bodies talk to us and they talk to us in different ways and hair loss can be one of them. Did you know, for example, when you have like little white spots on your nail beds or ridges on your nail beds, those are also signs of different deficiencies like vitamin and mineral deficiencies in your body. Your body talks to you. And so when our bodies talk to us, we need to listen. We need to pay attention. Let me go on before I get to preaching a little bit too much, okay? I'm gonna move on to my eyebrows. I used the castor oil every night on my eyebrows and I used the Q-tip and I just put it right on my eyebrows like that. And you know, I, I tend to use a good amount of everything. <laughs> so I put a good amount on, right? And I also put it all the way down to my eyelids because I also wanted to use it for my lash line. Now I'll tell you what I did. I did not put the castor oil directly on my lashes. I put it about a quarter inch above my lash line and just let my body heat bring it down to my lashes. And the reason why I did that is to keep the oil from going into my eye. And that worked pretty well. I also used my Q-tip and I went underneath my eye and I went down here on my eye puffiness and I'll tell you the results. I'm gonna give this one another 10 because my eyebrows have really, really filled in. Now, you know, they're never gonna be real thick because I explained to you before I had a car accident and there is a scar. And so that's why my eyebrows are thin because the scar took out a lot of hair 
right there that's never going to grow back. So I do the best with the little hair that's left over. But because of these hair growth phases, I often noticed that I would have little patches in there. So I used my Q-tip, I filled my brows in every night, and yes indeed, they did grow and fill in. So I'm very pleased with that. The other thing, my lashes, they did not get longer, but they did get thicker. I would say more dense on the lash line. So I was really happy about that because I usually wear my eyelashes um, because my lashes are so short. They don't emphasize my eye shape or anything. That's a whole other story. But I didn't want my lashes like to just come out completely, my natural lashes. And so I was really pleased to try this. So one day I would say this happened pretty quickly too. I would say about six days after I had been using the castor oil on my eyelids, about the sixth day, I was looking in the mirror and lo and behold, I could actually see a little lash curled up. And I said, oh my gosh, this is really working. So I really enjoyed the uh, castor oil for my eyelash growth and I will continue to use it there. The other thing, well, it's a couple of other things. The under eye puffiness, it helped a lot with that and also i have that line there that's coming right from my tear trough it helped a lot with that i can see it almost immediately with the puffiness i've tried all kinds of various under eye products to help reduce that puffiness the castor oil did work and i also had a tip that when you put the castor oil on your eyelids at night, it would help you sleep. And don't you know it did? I don't know if it was the placebo effect or if it was actually the castor oil, but it did help me sleep. So bravo, castor oil, bravo. Now, one area that I almost forgot about to talk about was I used it on my forehead, okay, right there. And I don't really have any wrinkles per se, as you can see. I just hold my face still. <laughs> I don't really have any wrinkles there, but what I have is some little tiny lines. And most of the time you can only see them if my skin is dry. But if I just let it go, then they would actually turn into wrinkles, which I'm not gonna let them go, okay? So uh, I got a hair in my eye. So anyway, I used the castor oil on my forehead and I did not like the result for that. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because I don't really have any wrinkles there. I just have those little tiny fine lines. What I found with the castor oil on my forehead was that it kind of acted like cement, you know? So I would put it on where there was nothing. And then when I would check the next day, it was like those lines actually became more prominent. And so I did not like that. So I stopped using it on my forehead and I went back to using my QRX Labs Squalane and Vitamin E oil. Now, I just think that the castor oil was probably just a little bit too thick for my forehead and I can't use it for everything. As you can see with this, it's very thin and it just comes right out, the Squalane and Vitamin E oil. So that one, I have to give that area a zero because that just did not work for me. Um, I got a hair in my eye, sorry. So I had to just totally switch up on the forehead. That one didn't work. So let me keep moving down. Um, I also use the castor oil on my upper lip area right there. And I would say that I was pretty pleased with that. Uh, I could not see that much of a difference, but as I said, I'm going to continue to use the castor oil. So we'll see over a period of months. I don't have any of these, you know, the lines above my lip and I, I want to keep it that way <laughs> for as long as possible. So uh, I'm just going to continue to use it. I used a very light coating right here and someone had asked before, 
if you use castor oil in an area that normally grows hair, will it make the hair grow more? And I would say no to that. I do have fine hair that grows over my upper lip and also on my chin due to hormones and all of that, okay? And I normally take it off with a cream depilatory. The castor oil did not make that hair grow any faster. Uh, I didn't notice any difference. So I would have to say no to that question as to whether it would make the hair grow more in different areas that you don't want it to grow in, okay? So let me just keep on traveling down. Now, we get to the big deal. The reason why I started to use the castor oil in the first place was because of my rotator cuff injury right here. I have two small tears in my rotator cuff and who knows what happened. There. I think it happened when I was moving, um, when I was getting married. I was lifting a whole lot of boxes and everything. I think it happened then. I was just trying to do too much um, by myself, lifting heavy boxes. So that may be what has happened. It could be due to old age. You know, we have to keep lifting weights as we're getting older. And even then, our muscles we're still going to lose some muscle mass. So I don't mean to use a lot of excuses. I'm just saying I have the two small tears and the tears are so small that my orthopedic surgeon said, you know, be ridiculous even to bother opening those up and operating on them. So he sent me to physical therapy. I was doing great with physical therapy. The pain uh, was gone. I got a full range of motion. Everything was wonderful. What happened? My physical therapist did a wrong thing and she had me work out on some TRX bands. And my other doctor told me, it's no way with a rotator cuff injury that you should be doing anything with TRX bands. So what happened? This happened about the day before Thanksgiving. The pain came back in my rotator cuff so badly. I was so upset because it's like the day before Thanksgiving and I was scared I wasn't even going to be able to make my Thanksgiving dinner because the pain came back so bad. Fortunately, the next day it had dissipated and I was able to cook, but the pain came back. And so let's say from Thanksgiving until you know, this month, I had been going on with this pain in my rotator cuff. And, you know, it, it varies. It's all, it was always like a little chronic, low grade, you know, maybe at the level of three going on all the time. And if any of you know that if you've experienced this kind of chronic, low grade pain anywhere in your body, it can affect your mood and it can affect how you relate to other people and everything. So I wanted that pain gone. You know, and so I was so excited when Jackie came on and she said she used her castor oil. She has a similar inner injury as I do with her rotator cuff. And um, she used it the next day. Her uh, pain was gone. So I said, let me get this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, the, the uh, castor oil did not work for my rotator cuff pain. Pain. It did not work. And I was pretty disappointed about that. Uh, but I'll tell you what I did. I put it on and I made the sleeve and everything. And, you know, the first night I didn't put anything on it. I just put the castor oil on it and I massaged it and I let it stay overnight. But after that, the next day came and I was expecting the pain to be gone, but it wasn't. So I said, okay, well, what else do I need to do? I got made a castor oil pack, which I showed you guys in the video. I put the heating pad on it and I did that for about seven nights straight. Nothing, no alleviation of the pain whatsoever. So that one, I have to give that a zero too. However, I'm not upset because the castor oil has worked well for me in so many other areas. What I happened, what ended up happening with that was last Wednesday, I went on ahead and got a cortisone injection here in the front of my shoulder. And that's just to, you know, prevent from having to take a Z pack because they, they did prescribe that Z pack, you know, where you get the steroids, you're supposed to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the first day, and then it weans down all the way to one day and you're taking them for seven days. No. 
Okay, those are still in my bathroom cabinet. I got the cortisone injection and my shoulder feels much better and I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so that's what happened with my rotator cuff moving south. The next place I used my castor oil was in my umbilicus in my belly button okay i told you i don't like belly button i don't like that those words so i say umbilicus okay so i took my castor oil and as you'll notice i transferred it from a big bottle into some smaller bottles let me show you this one this one i keep underneath my bathroom cabinet and this one i keep on my nightstand next to me. So I'll have it right there at the ready. So this one, I took it out. I took a little out. Well, actually a lot. Like I say, I like to use stuff, you know. I'm not stingy. And I would just drop it on, uh-oh, drop it on to my Q-tip and I'll rub it around in my umbilicus and then I will massage that whole area. Now this was supposed to be good for many different reasons but what I was using it for was to stimulate a bowel movement okay and don't you know I'm gonna give that a 10 too. I couldn't believe it but from my research and what I had heard the umbilicus is like the gateway into the body you know other than your mouth I had no idea I said well let me try it it works and I'm telling you it will work within an hour of doing it I don't know about for you but it will work for me within an hour of putting it in there and massaging it so what I was doing I was doing it at night um, you know while I was reading in bed I had to get up okay <laughs> because it works immediately so uh, oh I almost forgot my internal cleanse and these two are kind of related actually I did take the castor oil internally and I took the three tablespoons well the first time I took the three and a half and then I took three and then I took two that worked beautifully I had no problems whatsoever I wanted a cleanse and by God I got a cleanse everything came out I got a lot of comments asking me did I think that three tablespoons was too much and I have to be honest with you no I do not because that was the recommended amount to take one to three tablespoons for children to adults and as i said before everything doesn't work for everyone if you think that's too much for you don't take that much okay it'll work even if you just put it in your umbilicus and massage it so you don't even have to take it internally but i did that because i wanted the cleanse effect the other thing about when i put it there in my umbilicus i noticed I can do it like one day and I will continue to have, how can I say this without being gross, but I will continue to have smooth bowel movements for about two, three, or four days afterwards. And I think that is just amazing. You don't have to use it every day or every night. You could put it in that one day or that one evening and just let it work its castor oil magic. I really, really like that because I think that's helping my whole body reduce inflammation because the castor oil, we know that the ricinolinic acid reduces inflammation in the body so i will have to give that use a 10 also moving onward i also have a torn meniscus in my right knee you guys i'm athletic <laughs> i've been working out since i was 15 years old i am now 63 so up until this point, I never had a sports injury. And even with the torn rotator cuff, I don't know if that's a sports injury, but my torn meniscus is definitely a sports injury related to my love for jumping rope. I love to jump rope. But what was happening was that, uh, well, I got my meniscus torn. And I went to the doctor, even with all the, the, the things that I did to prevent that jarring on my knees and on my hips and everything. I had padded shoes. I jumped rope on a, a special pad, everything. It still tore my meniscus. I was in some acute pain. I couldn't put my 
uh, healed down. I went to the doctor, got an MRI, and that's what it was. And he said, stop jumping rope. And yes, I did stop jumping rope. Uh, I didn't have to have surgery or anything, praise the Lord. I did take on my own physical therapy and I stopped jumping rope. I still did everything else. I asked my doctor, uh, Dr. Fleischman, what can I do? What can I continue to do with a torn meniscus? He said, you can keep doing everything. Just don't jump rope. And that's what I did. For cardio at my gym, I found this kind of bouncy elliptical trainer and you bounce and you get that feeling of jumping rope, but you bouncing and you gliding at the same time is awesome. Anyway, I used that for, you know, maybe about 10 days. The pain went away. I could walk normally again, and I haven't had any problem whatsoever. Some people have to get surgery and everything, but I didn't have to. Okay, my meniscus is fine, but just to kind of soothe it and make sure that the inflammation stays down i have been using the castor oil on it you know i, I digress a lot of times making a long story short i have been massaging my right knee well actually both of them with the castor oil just in case i have some inflammation in there that needs to go down as far as i can see all of it has gone down so that was another use that i used the castor oil for i'm gonna give that one a 10 too <laughs> because I don't have any pain or anything. So let me see, moving downward. I'm all the way to my feet now. What I read about using the castor oil on your feet was that you would actually sleep better if you put some on the soles of your feet. So that's what I did. I put some on my eyelids and I put some on the soles of my feet. And yes, I did have a much better night's sleep. And what I'll say is I'm a person who tends to get up during the night. Um, sometimes my sleep is kind of erratic, but what I noticed was even if that happened, I was able to go back to bed and go back to sleep. And it seems like I was having more REM sleep as far as dreaming and everything. So I'm gonna give that one a 10 too. And I'm gonna continue to do it because not only does it help with sleep, it also helps to soften the soles of my feet. So I really like that as well. Now, let me see if it's any places that I forgot. Oh, I did want to mention this to you um, regarding using the castor oil internally. So, or even through the umbilicus, it does increase bowel motility and it decreases constipation and any other digestive issues that you have. And, um, the only thing, though, is I want to warn you, this is a contraindication or a couple of them. First of all, do not use it internally if you are pregnant because castor oil has been known to stimulate um, labor in pregnant women. In fact, some people actually use it for that very purpose to start labor, say like if, if a woman is late with having a baby. So don't use it while you're pregnant, okay? Also... If you have gastrointestinal problems like diverticulitis or colitis, you want to avoid the castor oil. Also, with uh, individuals with extreme skin sensitivities, you also want to avoid the castor oil. So those three, pregnant, bowel problems, or skin sensitivities, please avoid the castor oil. So let me see if there's anything else. Oh, I did want to mention that the next thing that I'm going to try with the castor oil is I'm going to do the, the liver cleanse. Okay. And so that's where you put the castor oil on your castor oil pack and you put it right here. I don't know if you can see. Okay. But you put it here right on your right side under your rib cage. And that's supposed to help to cleanse the liver. What does this say? It says that it's supposed to help with the fatty acid metabolism, the blood sugar metabolism, and also the excretion of waste products and killing off of bad microbes. Now, a lot of times I'm always thinking that something is wrong with my liver. It's not working all the way. Um, I'm going to tell you why. 
because since the liver is supposed to help metabolize fat, anytime my weight fluctuates between 150 and 153, I get mad. And I said, hmm, something must be wrong with my liver, you know, because I'm working out. I eat right. Why is it fluctuating so much? And it's not just water, I think. Sometimes it can be. But anyway, I'm going to try the liver cleanse and see what happens. We'll see. I always like to test my little theories. The other thing is what I did before when I kept staying on that kind of plateau going back and forth, I went to my integrative health doctor and she gave me the lipomino injection. And so what that is, it has methionine, inositol, choline, and vitamin, it's either B6 or B12, one of those. And so what that does, it's supposed to help stimulate the liver, the fatty acid metabolism. I had one before and it did work and it took me off of a plateau. I was on a plateau between, I want to say 153 and 155. I was on that plateau forever. It was about to drive me crazy. So I said, well, let me try this injection. And what she told me was that a lot of people, they'll come and get the injections like twice a week while they're trying to lose weight. I cannot afford that. One injection was like um, $50, but they gave it to me for $40 because I refer a lot of people over there. But that's still a lot. If I'm going to have it even once a week for a month, that's $160. So I said, let me try the, the liver detox first with the castor oil pack and we'll see how it goes from there. I might even just lose the little weight through my other efforts as I have been doing. I'm trying to stay down, you guys. I'm trying to stay down. I got a big day coming up in July. As you guys know, I'm going to participate in that Mrs. Senior Michigan, Ms. Senior Michigan pageant. And so I'm just trying to keep myself together, you guys. And so I'm trying to do everything I can toward that end. Eating right, exercising, drinking a lot of water, making sure I stay right in my mind, you know, because this kind of thing is, it's a, you have to have your mind right. You got to be in a positive frame of mind when you participate in this. It's not just about what you are manifesting and showing on the outside. It's also about your inward heart. I think even more importantly, because if you don't have that personality, that beauty personality is not going to show up. So I'm trying to keep everything in line so that I can be right when the time comes. And you guys, I want to thank two sources that I've cited throughout this video. I got to give credit where credit is due. And it's also in my description box. Number one, drjockers.com. He has an article and it's called Castor Oil, Key Benefits and How to Use It. I would really recommend that you go and read the entire article. It is quite long, but it will inform you very greatly about castor oil. It gives you some scientific research, um, some studies that back up things. You know, I like that. I'm a research person. Also, birdie.com. Castor oil. Does castor oil really help lashes grow? We ask derms to weigh in. That's also in my description box if you want to go and follow up with that. Now, I'm going to tell you one last thing that I found out that was really interesting about caps, um, castor oil. Now, I had one of you guys, Carolina92816. <laughs> okay, I forget the last numbers, but Carolina, she told me about the castor oil capsules. So during my research on those capsules, I found out that some people use the frozen Capsor oil, castor oil capsules to cleanse themselves from parasites. I thought that was really interesting. So I don't know what parasites I have or anything like that, or if I have any in fact, but if you have some, or if you know someone who has some, you might want to look into that. The frozen castor oil capsules as a parasite cleanse. I thought that was really, really interesting. It's like, you know, it's like a thousand and one uses 
for castor oil and I am so glad that this was brought to my attention. Like I always say, sometimes I'm late, but better late than never. What do you guys think? Have you been using your uh, castor oil for anything, any of these things that I mentioned? Hair conditioner, traction alopecia, eyebrows, eyelashes, under eye puffiness, lip line to prevent wrinkles. Have you used it in any sore joints areas on your body or on your feet or internally? If you did that internal cleanse that I told you guys about with the castor oil and the juice, please tell us how it went in the comments section. Do you guys have any questions? Questions, comments, always highly appreciated on this channel. Before I go, I do want to just tell you guys how excited about the growth of my channel I am. I got something like 150 new subscribers just last month. I think that is so awesome. And to all of you guys, all of my new subscribers, I wanna say thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And as well as all of you guys who have been with me for a long, long time, I also appreciate you very much. I am almost to a thousand subscribers. I cannot believe it. And you know, it, it probably seems like a little, to somebody who has a great big channel but for this little tiny youtube channel that i have i am so very excited so if you're watching this channel for the first time and you want to help me get to a thousand subscribers please please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you know be here and liking my videos so I think that's it for today, you guys. That is my 30-day castor oil update. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.